Now we get into the big mama. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is one of the biggest lectures we're going to have in our uh, psychiatric course here. You have your TCAs, your SSRIs, your MAOIs, as well as your atypical antidepressants. Woo! Now, these are all considered under the classification of antidepressants, okay? So you have your anti-anxiety, your antidepressants, as well as your antipsychotics. So keep them separated, those three classes, okay? So get a piece of paper out because, guys, we're going to go one by one, really um, breaking down everything. And one more thing before we start. The biggest thing here is patho, guys, honestly. If you have not seen the introduction of the uh, psychiatric medication video, it's only like 10 minutes. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it because the biggest thing is the way that these drugs work. The way these drugs work, and I always preach to you guys, pathophysiology. If you don't know the patho, everything else is not going to make sense. It's going to be a memorization game, and it shouldn't be that way. So memorize and understand the patho, then everything else will make sense. So, let's get into it. So our first one is our TCAs, which is known as our first generation antidepressants. It's what's known as your tricyclic antidepressants. And I kind of remember this as a TSA. If you guys um, have ever taken a flight somewhere, you would have to go through TSA security and it's really slow. It's really drawn out and the security process really lags. So um, TCAs are very slow in terms of getting to their th therapeutic uh, range usually takes a few weeks, if not six to eight weeks, to get to their therapeutic range, which we'll get into, okay? Now, if you guys want to go ahead and write the names of these down, I circled the most common one that you will probably be tested on and you will be probably be giving in the, uh, what am I saying, the clinical setting. So go ahead and pause the video, and you can write these down on a note card. But we're going to be going over the patho next. So pause it. If you don't pause it, I'm going to move over. Here we go. All right. What I recommend you guys to do is write down on a note card your patho, okay? So dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin. Write down your little acronyms here, DOPE and SER. Because the more you go over this, the more it'll make sense, okay? So, your norepinephrine, there's a block in the reuptake. So, what we're doing is we're slowing down the communication of these neurons from communicating with each other. So, um, also with serotonin, we are slowing down the communication problem. It's basically a prolonging of the um, neurotransmitters. So one side of the phone call is being delayed to the other connection because we're blocking these reuptake transmitters, okay? So with our norepinephrine, and then now we're trying to remember, what does norepinephrine do? Well, remember, norepinephrine is that catecholamine, also known as levofed in our pharmacology. Levofed or leave them dead, right? So norepinephrine helps to increase the heart rate increase the blood pressure. So if we're slowing down the communication of norepinephrine, we're basically telling our body to not activate the heart as severely, not squeeze those vessels and cause the blood pressure to increase. So what happens as a side effect is we get heart dysrhythmias. We also get hypotension. And you also have dryness and anticholinergic effects. And if you guys have seen that um, anticholinergic video where I talk about turning on your SNS and turning off your peripheral nervous system, 
Anticholinergic is just a fancy word for gastric juices. So you're going to be really dry, okay? If that makes sense. So um, your serotonin, on the other hand, what does serotonin do? Serotonin helps you sleep. It helps you have emotion, and it also helps your memory, helps you to remember things. So if your patients are going to have um, a serotonin discommunication, so the patient education, remember the TCA is just like your TSA, airport security. It's very slow, very long and drawn out. You know, you have to wait in line, take your shoes off, take your belt off. Make sure you don't have any gum, tissue paper inside your pockets. Oh my gosh, it's so long. So that's why it's very slow acting. It takes six to eight weeks. Uh, now, some books I found, they're like, okay, it takes two to four weeks. But the majority, I use three NCLEX books. Uh, two of them said six to eight weeks. So, depending on your instructor, how they want you to learn. Okay. So, it's very slow for your max therapeutic levels. Just like airport security is very slow. Now, the thing with our antidepressants mainly with our TCAs, but I mean, honestly, it could be with any of the drugs. We're monitoring for suicide ideations. Usually in the first month, when your patients are on antidepressant medications, they're going to start feeling better. And big NCLEX question, big test questions always say, if your patients are feeling better and want to go home, uh, what are you going to monitor for? And you're thinking like, oh, discharge planning. No, don't. It's always suicide ideations. And now you're thinking like, oh my gosh, suicide? They're feeling better. Why are they having suicide thoughts? The thing is, they're coming out of major depression. Oh my gosh, suicide? They're feeling better. Why are they having suicide thoughts? The thing is, they're coming out of major depression. So major depression, they wouldn't want to do anything. They just want to sit like a lump on a log, not do anything. Now they're feeling a little bit better. They're still depressed. So they might have energy to do something about feeling depressed and might have enough energy to carry out their thoughts of killing themselves. Okay, so that's why we monitor suicide ideations because your patients are coming out of major depression and having um, more energy to probably carry out their suicidal fantasies. So this is huge. If there's anything that you remember or take away from this, we have created the first psychiatric course for simple nursing called Psychiatric 101. Now, psychiatric is kind of like OB and pediatrics, where it's not as tough as medical surgical nursing. And it's not and really nothing in nursing school is going to be as tough as med surge and pharmacology. So honestly, the biggest thing with psych is really two things. It's one, knowing how to answer the question. If you guys don't know how to answer psych questions, that's really the major way nursing students fail their tests. So I'm in the business of helping you pass. I'm also in the business of helping clear your understanding and crystallize it to make sure you understand and grasp things, okay? Now, the biggest thing about this psych course is I focus directly on the struggle points. Pretty much the reasons why nursing students fail. First one is because of the questions themselves. So I include NCLEX-style test questions and I walk you through how to answer the test questions. Number two is I also include pharmacology because really farm stinks. Farm is really horrible, makes you want to quit nursing school. And we also include other very difficult topics in psychiatric. Now, everything is not included in terms of the minutia. I'm really focusing on the major reasons why nursing students fail. So if I can help you guys get over your toughest parts of psych, obviously you're still going to have to study and know your terms. It's not going to be as difficult as med surge or pharmacology. So 
That's why I'm breaking down the biggest issues here. So guys, follow along in the videos down below. And if you want a specific type of um, video request for a specific diagnosis that I didn't cover, go ahead and shoot me a video request by clicking up top on the video request or live webcam. Um, and this is only for your annual and diamond members. So guys, let's do it and let's kick some psychiatric boot.